I love you because you are everything and so much more that I have ever prayed for. I love you because you bring out the best in me. And being with you has taught me that life is so much more than chasing after the next big thing and that it's actually about being alive in the moment. The first time I actually ever saw you it was at a taxi rank. <laughs> mm-hmm. And you were with another guy. Ooh. <laughs> eh. And yeah, I remember just carrying on with my life. I never thought much of you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, little did I know that I'll meet you again in the future. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. I guess um, it wasn't love at first or second or third sight. It was love after many years of sights. <laughs> yeah. The first time I saw you, I remember thinking nothing. <laughs> I remember feeling nothing. <laughs> but after several years of being friends with you, I sort of remember um, one day you came over to my house to drop off my laptop because you, you know, I kept breaking my laptop and you were the one person that fixed my laptop for free. And I just remember just like the one day, Jay, you just, you were different. Wow. Like you got out the car and you're like, hi, Bali. You know, I come out in slow motion out of the car? <laughs> I think in my head at that time, yeah. I just remember you smiling at me and I just remember feeling butterflies and I was like, oh no. Oh no, I think I like him. And yeah, I just remember your smile suddenly just wasn't just any ordinary smile. I was like, I actually really like this guy's face. What attracted me the most about you was your smile. Uh, you have the most amazing and the kindest smile ever. And it always seemed like you had a special smile just for me. What attracted me the most to you was your sense of humor. <laughs> And you laugh at my jokes, even though they're stupid. <laughs> I guess that makes me stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and your kindness, I think your kindness drew me closer than anything. And also your eyes, the way you looked at me. And your smile. I remember coming back home one day after church and I was thinking how you, you were literally everything I prayed for. Like you ticked every box and you've been right in front of me all along. And I, one of the things that I prayed for was my wife or my spouse to be a friend. That's exactly what you are. You are my best friend. 
So, uh, I think with me, I remember our first date. I just remember you sitting so nervously and awkwardly across the table from me. And it was quite a romantic scene, candlelight and all. But I remember on our first date, looking across from you and I thought, man, this is it. This is the one I want to spend the rest of my life with. You are everything that I've ever not like prayed for. And this is what I was waiting for my whole life. I was waiting for you. Everything in that moment was leading up to me being with you. Ah, uh, babe, you know, after all is said and done, I have something to tell you. Yes, my love. It took me 25 years to be 25. <laughs> so, I think you should be patient <laughs> in life. All will work out. My love? Yes, babe. I also have something to tell you. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> I've been keeping this for a long time. I I think my parents are older than you. <laughs> I just want you to know that you don't have to carry that burden by yourself. <laughs> I will be younger with you. <laughs> we will both conquer this thing of older parents together. <laughs> So, what was your biggest struggle being single? My biggest struggle being single. Um, there were there were a lot of struggles, if mm. I have to be honest. Mm. Um, one of them, much later on, um, is that I was surrounded by a lot of good people. You mean females? Yes. <laughs> Good people. Relatively good people. And I just didn't know which good was good for me, so to speak. So, so politically good. <laughs> You're surrounded by hot girls, guys. <laughs> like, no. I'm lying. I feel like there were hot girls. I didn't know which hot girls to pick. No, it, it, it wasn't even on a level of hot because I had seen a lot of beautiful girls. I think I was at that phase where, like, Beauty wasn't the first thing I, I would look at because I, I had been so disappointed in the past where you see a beautiful girl mm. and then she opens her mouth and you're like, ah, no, she's not beautiful anymore. Because the most vile things would come out of her mouth and Jay. It wasn't a specific person. So I, just, you know. <laughs> I was about to say, who, who that? <laughs> No, like, yeah, so there was that constant disappointment that you see someone beautiful and mm. it's like we're not even on the same um, spiritual level so to speak um, so yeah it, I, I was at that phase in my life where I wasn't looking at beauty first mm. so the hardest thing was the hardest knowing, thing was yeah knowing who like how, so it, it goes down to one of our topics where it's how do I know which one yeah the hardest thing was like do I follow my feelings mm. or do I follow do I wait and listen to the voice of God because as I said there were a lot of good people mm. and not just in looks but like heart wise yeah heart wise and even their actions so which good did I choose, choose? stay tuned for part 2 when it tells you how you made the choice of really? choosing who? Miguel. <laughs> uh, for me, the hardest thing, I think that for me, the hardest thing about being single is that sometimes, I don't know if it's just me, but maybe there's another, some boy out there that feels like me. But sometimes we glamorize it too much. So for me, it wasn't like, like these bubble baths with these candlelit bubble baths where I'm just like a romantic walks with Jesus. Self love. Yeah, it wasn't always that. Like sometimes for me, I think in my single phase, 
the hardest thing was having to deal with the fact that you know we always point to other people and we say this person's not right because of this and this and this but it was also realizing that I might not be right for someone because I had toxic traits in me mm. so it was also a lot of healing you know it was a lot of things where God was working in my heart and revealing things about me that I hadn't healed from maybe from like childhood or whatever and so and if you know anything about healing it's not romantic trips to like Bali and you know like you go on this adventure and then I meet a cute guy and then I'm healed sometimes it's like coming before the Lord and weeping because of maybe um, regrets or past wounds or whatever so for me my biggest struggle in being single I think was really allowing myself to be vulnerable before the Lord also guys I was content being single you know like I was content I wasn't like oh I really wish I had someone but if we are honest you look at other children and you're like for me I would look at like other couples that we were exposed to and I would think will that ever happen for me like really like what if I'm waiting for nothing (laughs) And there was pressure to like sort of look happy. Yes, so yes. Because like, like ah, I'm happy. I'm happy. Single. I'm single and I'm happy. Not that you're not happy. Mm. But like I think some, it's like you have to, it's like this front people put up like I don't need anybody. So although yes, I did enjoy being single. I was content being single. I would lie. But there were moments when I would look at other couples and think, am I, re- like is this ever going to happen for me? Like, I mean, I had moments when I was like, you know, I wish I had someone that would just call me up other than my best friends and say, how are you? Mm, the guy came, hey? Yeah. Came All the time now. All the time. <laughs> how are you? How are you? <laughs> but, uh, so you do the <laughs> No, shame. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Sing the second question. Do you think that your definition of purity has changed over the years? Yes, from initially what it was, it has changed quite a lot. Um, for the most part, I used to think that purity was just the physical aspect. Mm. And I didn't really look at you know the spiritual side of things. Mm. And I was very one-dimensional when it came to purity. It was either you're a virgin or you're not a virgin not a virgin so you're not pure if you're not a virgin and you're pure if you're a virgin yeah and for me like living that lifestyle um of purity under the definition i like when i look at it back now you you can see like the error in in my thinking in that you know physically Mm. you were pure so to speak but the filthiest thoughts can run through your mind but when you look at it like holistically um, purity in itself purity when something is pure it's like it's clean it's untainted it's without blemish or spot and now that I see it this way it's not just about maintaining your virginity or, or whatever because when you do get married and you're no longer a virgin you still yeah then what you now not be pure mm. so like this purity is some it's like at the heart of purity it's a pursuit of being like god because mm. god is the you know the lamb uh, without spot without blemish mm. um who's untainted and clean mm. so it's purity is a lifestyle after the heart of god and it's not it, it doesn't really have to do much with the sexuality sexuality is part of purity because you give up your your whole life you give up everything for god Mm. so that's where like the sexuality comes um, into play it's just a small part of of the bigger picture and i think i made it the bigger picture Mm. in the small part so like my way of thinking is reversed and now i view purity holistically and not just one-sided I think for me personally, um, purity was my purity was really challenged. I think in my single phase, where um, I thought that if, in order for me to qualify, qualify mm. to sort of um, 
get this perfect love story, I had to keep certain rules. And if only I kept these certain rules, then only was I worthy of this beautiful love story. But then for me, the one thing that God really showed me was that, um, because previously, obviously, I, um, my, my, my one wish as a little girl was that I was going to date one guy for the rest of my life. And then after that one, like, you know, one guy, I don't want that like that. But so because of that, I crucified myself because I thought I'm no longer worthy. Mm. You know, there were other girls that had not dated anyone before and whatnot. And that is admirable. That is very admirable. And so for me, I compared myself and I thought no one had ever loved me. You've had a boyfriend before. No one's going to love you. And so for me, God really opened up my eyes into saying that purity is not just a set of rules where if I do this and I do this and I do this, if I don't have a boyfriend for my whole life, then only God is like, you are worthy of a good love story. Everyone is worthy of a good love story by definition of the fact that we are children of God. When I gave up my life and I surrendered my life and I said, I give all that I am to Christ, by virtue of the fact that I belong to Christ, I am worthy. My worth is not found on whether I've had a boyfriend before, whether I have a child, whether I don't have a child, whether I've, regardless of anything, my worth will forever be found in Christ. And so for me, I guess the switch was the fact that my worth was placed on whether I'd had a boyfriend or not, and not on whose I was and whose I am as I belong to God. And so also just purity is, if you look at the Bible, it defines that God is looking for people that are of pure hearts. And so fine, physically, we might be, you know, pure, we be keeping all the rules, but then as Christian people, we, we run, like we don't ever talk about the fact that I can be Christian and I can be toxic towards you. I can just be horrible because my heart is not in the right place with God. Mm. So I think for me also, especially now that I'm in a relationship with you, where I realize again that if I'm not in alignment with God, you know, the time that I spend, the two hours that I spend with God need to filter through to the t- to, to all aspects of my life. So my devotional lifestyle needs to grow beyond my room and affect and impact also my relationships, especially my relationship with you. And so for me, purity has been really God working on my heart where I'm no longer selfish and I think the world revolves around me and that Mpundo, if I say I want, then Mpundo must give. You know, but also just... What on- do you want? <laughs> But like also you just like honoring you as <laughs> my me and, and respecting you, you know. So yeah, so for me, purity has been that like defining my worth, where my worth is found only in Jesus Christ. And so I wish I could go back to 15 or 16 year old me that was so self-conscious, mm. you know, about, okay, I if boys look at me, I must not even, you know, <laughs> where I could tell her that you're worthy, you are so worthy, you gave your life to Christ, and God is writing the beautiful love story, not because of what I'm doing or not doing, but God is writing me a beautiful love story because my affections are fixed solely on Him. It's beautiful. Thank you. Aww. So, yeah, guys, that is a short version. Of our love story. Yes. This video is long. I don't know why you say it's short. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we'll dig into more stuff. This, this was a short story of our love story. Um, we're going to dig a bit deeper on um, in the rest of the series. And hopefully you guys can ask us questions as well. Because we questions. like this... <laughs> There's, I feel like there's a lot to talk about and there's mm. like we hardly have time to like draft everything so mm. like what would really help us is if you guys submit questions and you know we can answer them more than one video but yeah and the questions don't have to be on like the comment well it would be nice if you commented with the question but if you're too shy and you want to DM us your question and you want it to be anonymous so if your name is like Sandra and 
you wanna ask a question, but you're like, ooh, people are gonna judge me. Yeah. You can DM us and tell us, please don't say my name. Yes, you will... Sandra, you can DM us and we, <laughs> yeah, we won't answer. tell anyone. We won't even tell the two girls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you can DM us and we'll respect your wishes and we'll, we'll keep you anonymous and we'll answer all your questions as truthfully as we can. And ciao, guys. Ciao, guys. Until the next time, I think the next video is How, how do, do you know? know? Yeah, how that's you know? the hardest one. Like, yeah, he, he said I was the one, so I don't know how we know that I'm the one. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say he's the one, I'm joking. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we've got a YouTube channel. You, we can't you, break up. <laughs> do you know? Do you know? Like, yeah, all YouTube and whole Instagram YouTube account. Can't break up with me. Yeah. So yeah, yeah so guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. subscribe. Thank you so much, guys. Bye. Can we say bye with a wall? <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Bye. Ha ha ha!